delicious hi uh, my name's Tez Ilias and I should really point out at the beginning of this that I, I'm aware I'm more than fully aware that I do look a lot more like an over enthusiastic apprentice candidate than a stand-up comedian I know okay it's just what they've put me in um, and I should also point out at this very early stage that I am I am openly Asian okay so that's uh, <laughs> that's what that is British Asian as well which I love I love being British British people give me a cheer <laughs> nice uh, Non-British people, give me a cheer. <laughs> I reckon we could take them. Um, <laughs> if we all work together, <laughs> take them down. <laughs> Honestly, if you're not British, you're missing out. <laughs> Frankly, that's my conclusion. Because there are so many benefits to being British. Like, literally, there are so many benefits. <laughs> okay. Just learn how to fill out a form. <laughs> and it's brilliant. Um, I don't call them benefits, obviously, I call them reparations. But nevertheless, <laughs> they're great. And of course, I love my roots as well, uh, which are obviously um, from Lancashire, <laughs> a lost country. And I love my deeper roots as well, which happen to come from Pakistan. But with this background, sometimes I don't feel completely British. Like, I'm not indigenously a British person. But I'm not a Pakistani either. I guess I've got this kind of hybrid background where I'm a British national Pakistani or, or, or BNP for sure, okay? And let me tell you, it's hard being in the BNP in 2015. You tell a liberal, they will choke on their hummus, okay? It's hard for them to wrap their heads around. <laughs> I am Muslim as well, um, so I've got all of that going on. Um, for those of you that don't know that much about us, um, you might recognise us from such hit TV shows as The News, OK, because we... <laughs> we have been on that one a lot this series, haven't we? Um, we've got recurring characters, it's on our prime time. We, we've smashed that show. We have... <laughs> yes, sorry. It's an interesting time being Muslim at the moment, because a lot of people have written and said a lot of things about us over recent weeks, months, even years. Like some people, you know the ones out there, the ones with access to the internet. Like they think, they think being Muslim is all animal cruelty, oppressing women and claiming benefits. That's what they think it is. And what those people haven't realised is, like, there are downsides as well. <laughs> Nando's up here, okay? <laughs> Have you tried looking after four wives in today's economy? So it's expensive. It is expensive. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. I, I feel like, I, I'll level with you. I feel like British Muslims don't get enough credit for how progressive we are. I'll give you an example. My Imam, like my priest, he is massively pro gay marriage. Loves it. Cannot get enough of the stuff. And that might surprise you guys to hear that tonight. If I'm honest, it surprised me too the first time I heard it. But he quite clearly got up in front of his congregation on the Friday before the weekend of the first gay wedding and he addressed us a bit like I'm addressing you guys right now. And he said to us, Wagwan Taliban. Okay, no, okay. Um, uh, no, okay, listen, I'm paraphrasing slightly for your entertainment, okay? Let's not be so mature about it, guys, come on. No, he said to us, listen, we, British Muslims, live in a tolerant society. There's no reason why we cannot support gay marriage. There's no reason why, in 2016, one gay man cannot get married to another lesbian woman, OK? There's no reason why... There's no reason why we cannot support that union. And I was like, OK, um... I don't know if you fully understood what's happening. Um... <laughs> But I am loving your enthusiasm. <laughs> Sign me up to your newsletter, because that is going to give me lols, OK? Um, <laughs> Despite this progressiveness, the government is really worried about the influence of Islamist extremism at the moment. They're so worried about it that they keep banging on about this thing called British values. You may have heard it, banging on about it. And I think that's fine on paper. But what, what's got me concerned about it is that the government wants to make sure that every school child learns exclusively British values in school. And that concerns me because I never learned British values growing up. It just wasn't on the curriculum, which probably explains why I've grown up uh, to become such a savage. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe the government is right, all right? Maybe I shouldn't be so cynical, because actually I remember back in the day, 
And I, I was, I was, guys, I leveled with you. I was brainwashed with some pretty hardcore Arabic imperialism. Okay, like I remember learning some really radical stuff. Okay, like algebra, guys. Okay, it was. <laughs> and if exclusively British values means my niece and nephew don't have to go through that same trauma, then bring it on. I say, it's not just the government, though, is it? I was reading the Guardian a few months ago. Of course, I was. Um, and <laughs> in that, in that, like I read this interview, and the interview was with um, like. A quite a senior police officer from the Metropolitan Police. He was a senior commander. And he was having an interview about uh, extremism. And he said in this interview that Muslims in this country need to do more to combat extremism within its own community. And I was like, all right. <laughs> Bit of self-policing. <laughs> Respect my authority, OK? <laughs> Sign me up. I'm in. So I was like, all right, sir. I've signed up. What should we be looking out for? What is it that will make me think, right, stop that, lads? And he said <laughs> in this... Because I think that's probably all it takes, right? If you just... <laughs> stop it. <laughs> right. And he said in this completely non-ironic interview, questions should be asked if people stop shopping at Marks and Spencer. <laughs> Hey, yeah, is that Sherlock? <laughs> yeah, hi, mate. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, no. No, you're off the case. Yeah, you know those, yeah, we, we solved it. Yeah, you know those lads who stopped shopping at Marks and Spencer six months ago? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was them, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no shit, <laughs> Sherlock. Okay, all right, fine. Um, I mean, what does that extremist even look like, really? Guys, because this is not just any extremist. <laughs> this is an ISIS-loving, MNS boycotting, best of British extremist. <laughs> now, if there's any of you who don't know where that reference is from, then you're obviously part of the problem. Um, <laughs> I can see some of you looking at me right now thinking, we like him. <laughs> but why, why has he got holes in his beard? Like, <laughs> why have you got gaps in your face, bruh? Are <laughs> you going to explain yourself or are we just staring at your chessboard face all night? What is... <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Guys, it's my... It's my holy beard. <laughs> Guys, I'm just a young guy ish, youngish guy, um, <laughs> with a dream, okay? And that dream is to play the doctor in Doctor Who, all right? That is, <laughs> that's all I want, okay? That's all I want. Um, because look, we're talking about a black James Bond now, that's a thing. So why can't we have an Asian guy in the lead role of Doctor Who? And I said this to my best friend, and I said, hey, best friend, OK? <laughs> I want to be the first Asian doctor. <laughs> and he said, you're a fucking idiot. OK. <laughs> Guys, I've been uh, Tez Ilias. Um, if you did like my jokes or even just my politics, then you can, um, you can follow me. Um, I'm going to leave in about 10 minutes. <laughs> I've been Tez. Enjoy the rest of your wonderful evening. Have a good night. God bless. <laughs>